The equatorial mount, used in an array of high-end telescopes to track objects across the sky, is a real problem for the flat Earth hypothesis. Unlike the popular alt-azimuth mount used by many backyard astronomers, the equatorial mount only requires one axis of rotation to track a celestial object. An equatorial mount must face due north when north of the equator, or due south when south of the equator. The polar alignment arm on the equatorial mount must be adjusted to the observer's latitude, north or south of the equator, which simultaneously orients the polar alignment arm parallel to the polar axis. When the equatorial mount is in this configuration, the right ascension arm rotates on the polar alignment axis to track an object's arc across the sky. This single axis of rotation to keep an object precisely in the camera's field of view, along with the fact that setting the observer's latitude on the polar alignment arm achieves polar axis alignment anywhere on Earth, demonstrably proves the geometry of our world. For this demonstration, two identical equatorial mounted telescopes are pointed at the same star one on a spherical Earth and one positioned on the flat Earth. The observers in both examples are situated on the 45-degree, north latitude line. Both telescopes are oriented to point due north, with their polar alignment arms set to the observer's latitude, 45 degrees north. On the globe model, the extended longitudinal axis running through the polar alignment arm, is parallel to the polar axis. In the northern hemisphere, the polar axis is of course a line extending from the north pole of the Earth vertically, which intersects the north star Polaris. This point is the center of rotation of the sky. On the flat Earth model, the extended longitudinal axis running through the polar alignment arm, is not parallel to the polar axis. Therefore it is not aligned with the center of rotation of the sky. It is imperative to remember that the angle at which the polar alignment arm is set to, is determined by, and equal to, the observer's latitude on Earth. On the globe model, we have five separate observers at five different locations on Earth. Each one has set the angle of their polar alignment arm, to match their latitude, north of the equator. Recall that the angle of the polar alignment arm is measured from the observer's local horizontal level line or ground plane. Even though all observers have set their polar alignment arms to completely different angles at their respective locations, the longitudinal axis running through their polar alignment arms are all parallel to the polar axis. And, to each other. On the flat Earth model, we have five separate observers at five different latitude locations on Earth. The longitudinal axis running through all observers' polar alignment arms are parallel to the polar axis and to each other. However, no one has yet taken the mandatory step of setting the angle of their polar alignment arm to match the latitude at their location. When all observers on the flat Earth model set their polar alignment arms to match their latitudes, the longitudinal axis running through their polar alignment arms, are no longer parallel to the polar axis nor to each other. This misalignment of the polar alignment arm, relative to the polar axis, presents an interesting problem. To better understand this problem, 
Let's examine the part of the mount which moves the camera or telescope and is responsible for the precise tracking of celestial objects around and across the sky. This arm, known as the right ascension axis, is attached perpendicular to the polar alignment arm and rotates around the polar alignment axis. When the polar alignment arm is aligned with the polar axis, the right ascension arm will rotate parallel to the Earth's equator, and trace out a perfect circle around the sky's center of rotation. It is due to the simplicity of this single axis of rotation, which enables an equatorial mounted camera to precisely track a celestial object across the sky. When a motor known as a clock drive is attached to the ascension arm, via a clutch and gear system, the ascension arm rotates in the opposite direction of Earth's rotation at the exact same speed as the sky's apparent rotation. This precise tracking keeps a celestial object perfectly centered in the camera's field of view, permitting long exposure photography. The only location on the flat Earth model where the angle of the polar alignment arm matches the observer's latitude is at the North Pole. An equatorial mount positioned at any other location on the flat Earth cannot track a celestial object with just a single axis of rotation. The mount at this observer's location has the angle of its polar alignment arm set to 45 degrees north, the location's latitude, as required in reality. It is immediately apparent that the right ascension arm is perpendicular to the polar alignment arm axis, but is not perpendicular to the sky's center of rotation. Therefore it is impossible for the right ascension arm to trace out a perfect circle around the celestial sphere. In this configuration, the circle traced on the sky by the right ascension arm, is inclined to the axis of the sky's rotation by 45 degrees, making it impossible for the mount to match the star's speed across the sky using just one axis of rotation. The right ascension arm must slow dramatically to keep from overtaking the star. The only solution to this problem on the flat Earth would, would be, be to use two axes, axes of, of rotation. rotation. In this example, a camera is mounted to the end of the declination arm. In reality, this arm is used to align the camera when first acquiring a target to track. After the desired target is in the center of the camera's field of view, this arm is locked in place and does not move during tracking. This flat earth model is scaled to represent 8,000 miles from the North Pole to the ice wall. On this scale the sun has been placed at a height of 3,500 miles, and is circling over the equator on the spring equinox. The camera and equatorial mount are located at 45 degrees north latitude, and the polar alignment arm is set to 45 degrees. The sun will do one orbit before the tracking animation begins. The camera begins tracking at sunrise. At first glance, it would appear that the equatorial mount is functioning as intended, configured properly and tracking the sun quite well using a single axis of rotation. But upon closer inspection, a camera view down the long axis of the right ascension arm clearly shows that the declination arm is swinging up and down to adjust for errors in the elevation angle. Also notice the speed at which the right ascension arm is rotating is not constant. The mount is successfully tracking the sun by splitting speed and angles of rotation between two axes. Now let's remove the animation from the declination arm, and, as we see in actual practice, use one axis only for tracking.
as you can see, without the polar alignment arm being polar aligned, it is not physically or geometrically possible to track the target using only one axis of rotation. In this example, the time is again, on the day of the vernal, or spring equinox for the northern hemisphere. Our observer's position is 45 degrees north latitude. As we view this graphic, the sun is directly behind us, very, very far away. Directly over the equator, and in line with the center of the globe. The line labeled ecliptic plane, denotes the plane of Earth's yearly orbit around the sun. The line running parallel to the polar axis, represents the longitudinal axis running through the observer's polar alignment arm. Zooming straight in on the observer's location, we can see that the mount is facing due north, the polar alignment arm is set to our latitude of 45 degrees, and is polar aligned. The tracking camera is pointing due east at sunrise. Here we can see the single axis rotation the mount will make, as we play the upcoming tracking animation. In this animation example, the Earth will rotate due east on its axis in relation to a distant stationary sun. As you can see, the camera is successfully tracking the sun, using a single axis of rotation. I sincerely hope that this presentation has at least given the Flat Earth proponents something to research further.